Well, good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday morning once again, and it's good to be here. Uh, Daryl and I are glad that you're with us. And I pray that those who are part of our Tuesday congregation, and indeed all who may have joined with us today, will draw a great blessing from this time we will share together. Uh, last Sunday was church anniversary. I mentioned that in the Sunday service. 162 years of faithful witness here at Greenfield in Italy. But I wonder if you know the story uh, of Queen Anne. It's one that has been part of our non-conformist heritage for many generations, and I'd like to, to concentrate on that today. But first of all, dear friends, let us come into the presence of Almighty God. Let us hear the words of Isaiah. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labour on what does not satisfy? Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, we praise you and glorify your name. We thank you that through the merits of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are your body, your church, and we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving. For in Christ you have loved us and, and given yourself for us. We come then in Jesus' name. Receive our praise. Amen. Our hymn, dear friends, is O oh God beyond all praising. Our reading, dear friends, is from the letter to the Ephesians, and we read from the second chapter, beginning to read at verse 11. Therefore remember that formerly you who were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now... In Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Jesus. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. 
Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. May God bless to us our reading of his holy word. Amen. Paul there speaks of the unity of the church being built on the teachings of the apostles and those who have gone before. And that's an important message for us all in the Christian church. Now, I was brought up in Seaside in Llanelli, attended the Welsh Baptist Church at Bethel Llanelli, and many other chapel communities marked the first Sunday of August as a day of prayer and thanksgiving for religious freedom. It began half past seven in the morning, the first prayer meeting of the day. There followed another prayer meeting at 10.30, and then in the evening, the usual preaching service. I recall the, the passion of the prayers of those who brought their thanks for the religious freedom of worship and the sacrifice of so many who had given in themselves for the principles of worship and belief. It was many years later that I came to realize how important this first Sunday of August was, so significant to the history of religious liberty, and especially us who come from the dissenting background, the nonconformist background, because our people in those days were often cruelly persecuted for their faith. I'd like to introduce you to Queen Anne. Here she is, who came to the throne in March 1702. She was recently uh, recalled by Olivia Coleman in the film The Favourite, and she portrayed this troubled queen in a very professional and a very good way. It was, however, Queen Anne's death on the 1st of August, 1714, that was so significant to us. The reason was that there had been condemnation and persecution of those who were called the dissenters, which we would later would recall the nonconformists. They grouped together denominations like ourselves as Baptists, Congregationalists, and later, of course, the other free church traditions, such as the Calvinistic Methodists and others, who would not conform to the liturgy of the Church of England. Now, for Queen Anne, that was an abhorrence. She became totally intolerant of such groups, and so a parliamentary bill was designed to close all ministerial training colleges and to ban from public office those who had a dissenting faith, with the intention, of course, of severely restricting their worship and eventually the very existence of the dissenters, the nonconformists. And here it is, the Schism Bill. This was rushed through Parliament and passed on to the Queen for royal assent. Dear friends, it was due to be signed on the 1st of August, 1714, which would have made it the law of the land. However, Queen Anne died suddenly in the early hours of that morning, and the bill never received the assent it needed to become the law of the land. It was eventually repealed. And for that reason, there was great relief and rejoicing from the dissenting groups and a large number from the established church as well who were against this legalism, which they saw as Christian persecution. And then the hymn we often sing, mainly on Remembrance Sunday, written by Isaac Watts. O oh God, our help in ages past, was partly written due to this religious freedom that came. He saw it, like many of his day, as the providence of God. He too was among those who saw the hand of God, the providence of his grace. All regretted the death of the queen, of course, but on the other hand, the religious freedom followed that was to be the order of the day. When the bill was eventually rescinded, it never became law. One of the verses that Isaac Watts penned says it all. Under the shadow of your throne, your saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is your arm alone, and our defense is sure. Part of our religious history as nonconformists, dear friends, and that's why it was celebrated, not perhaps so much today, but certainly in the days that have been, when our forefathers and mothers gave thanks to God for his providential grace. And that's why today, dear friends, we must never forget those who are persecuted for their faith, and to pray that God's providence and love will be with them as well, to protect them and keep them those who are imprisoned for their faith. Do you know, we take our religious freedom so very, very much for granted, while many in this world of ours 
are not allowed to worship as their consciences would lead. So, first Sunday of August, it was very important and must never, ever be forgotten. And it's also our church anniversary Sunday here at Greenfield. You know, I wonder if the good saints of Bethel and Zion who came here and established the church opened the doors on the 1st of August, 1858. I wonder if that date meant something to them. I'm sure it did. I'd like to think it was. For dear friends, in the wonderful words of this hymn, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. He is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own love he bought her, and for her life he died. That's the church. Of whatever tradition we are, we give thanks that we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the freedom of worship we often take so very much for granted. Today we thank you especially for those generations long gone who stood firmly in the faith once given to the saints. For those who sacrificed their lives for what they believed and entered into the reward that you have prepared for them, those who are among the faithful of God. For this church and all other churches, Lord, we thank you for our communities of faith, for all communities who faithfully proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks of whatever tradition and pray that you will uphold all by your grace as we proclaim together the unsearchable riches of Christ. We remember those who are cruelly persecuted, Lord, in countries where bigotry and prejudice reign, for families rent apart and loved ones lost. We thank you, Lord, for their sustenance and faith in the face of great opposition, intimidation, and even death. Uphold your saints, our Father, and may their lives be strengthened because they know their reward is with you. Grant us, Father, that we, like them, might know that nothing in all creation can ever separate us from your love in the Lord Jesus Christ, for we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and gave himself for us. Bless our Father the ministry of your church in the world. Uphold your servants who may feel discouraged or who find themselves perplexed by the situation in which they find themselves. Uphold your servants by your grace, we pray. Hear our prayers. In the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Now, dear friends, we're going to hear Isaac Watts' hymn. This was sung in Griefy last November. O oh God, our help in ages past.
And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and God's people in every land, now and always. Amen.